We'll just go with the keys, I guess. All right, so, uh, as you're aware, my name is Emily Rose, also known as Nexi Love on the interwebs. I work as a software developer in mobile R&D at a company called Sauce Labs Incorporated. We do like Selenium in the cloud, and uh, right now I'm doing uh, some work with uh, real devices and getting those hooked up to our cloud, so it's easier for people to scale as they're testing. Uh, so that's a lot of fun, but um, completely unrelated to what I want to talk to you about today. Uh, I want to talk to you about digital artistic expression with music and visuals and Node.js and hardware. Uh, and when I was planning this talk, I was going to give you a talk uh, with completely different uh, content, but um, I found this thing, and it was way cooler than what I wanted to talk to you about. Uh, so I scrambled to get everything together to be able to do a demo around what is called the Samchillion Tip 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 Chi P. Has anyone ever heard of that? No? Is it possible to get the lights down just a little bit? Light people, please. Okay, anyway. Um, so yeah, it was invented uh, by this guy named Leon Grunbaum. US patent number 5565641. Uh, it's basically a MIDI controller that uses a QWERTY keyboard. And uh, in contrast to every other instrument that you're probably familiar with where a single key plays a single note, the way this works is that each key is assigned to a relative pitch. So it will change the pitch either up and down by a certain number of notes. Uh, so that idea really resonated with me. Um, and I had already been kind of planning about talking on, you know, just kind of more artistic stuff, doing some interactive art, uh, playing with, you know, beagle boards and uh, Arduinos and sensors and LEDs and stuff like that, uh, which is still a lot of fun. But this seemed uh, even cooler, and I really wanted to share it with everyone. So um, so this is it. Uh, his tagline is, it's all relative. You can find more information about it on samchillion.com. Uh, this is the original unit uh, that Leon built. Uh, and as I mentioned, there's no fixed pitch keys. Each key shifts the tone. And for example, like you have a, a zero shift, and plus one, and plus two, so on and so forth. And there's a lot of other stuff in here that I haven't had a chance to implement yet that the, the original Samchillion does. Uh, but I want to show you um, eventually kind of what, what I've uh, come up with so far and maybe solicit, solicit some help from the rest of you. So um, uh, Leon's original implementation is done in C. Uh, it's not open source. If you want to buy a license, you have to pay for the license and you just get the executable. Um, so I've been talks with him about maybe contributing to open source a little bit and open, open sourcing the project and maybe getting some more people interested in playing around with it and whatnot. Um, but for the time being, uh, that wasn't the possibility, so I decided, well, let's use Node.js and see what we can come up with. Uh, and it turns out that I was able to do this with basically two modules and a little bit of extra code. One module I wrote two years ago for an entirely unrelated thing. I was related to the club that I was working for at the time. Uh, and then the core MIDI API, which is something uh, basically just node bindings um, for the, the core MIDI API that Apple uh, is included in OSX. So here's an example of uh, just the basic level functionality of what HidStream does. It just wraps the node HID library, uh, which by the way, HID stands for human input, input device. So keyboards, mice, um, flying carpets, things like that. Um, so basically what I did is I just wrapped it into a stream interface that did all the parsing for you. So you don't have to just mess around with this weird bit field. And you just get you know, mod keys and key codes. And um, if there's any characters associated with the key that you're pressing, it'll show you that as well. Uh, and then the core MIDI API that I mentioned, um, like I said, it's, it's node bindings uh, for, for Apple's core MIDI library. Uh, it just sends raw MIDI messages. Uh, you just, similar to how you would write to a stream, core MIDI dot write uh, with three parameters. Um, if you're interested in that, there's, there's tons of information on MIDI and it's way more complicated than I was expecting. So, um, but with that, uh, we've kind of uh, gone over the basics of, of how I'm gonna uh, try to get this uh, to work, I'd like to do a demonstration. Um, so what I'll do is uh, start out playing it myself, and then I hope maybe uh, someone will be willing to come up and try it as well. Any takers? Yes. All right. So here's my keyboard. Uh, it's a hacked up little uh, DOS keyboard. And I, I attached some programmable LEDs to it as well that I had hoped to have working in time, but I did not. So if anyone's interested, I'm going to be hacking on this 
throughout the conference. So pull requests, welcome. So can I get a, like a drum roll or something? Like stamp your feet, you know? There we go, all right, all right. Watch it not work. So, kind of cool. Um, basically, uh, to give you an example, uh, an idea of what I'm doing here is I'm basically using like three to four keys at a time. Um, let's see if I can get out of here. Give you some more feedback here. So, right now this is how I'm launching it, putting my password in, because uh, little known interesting factoid is uh, OS X needs root access to access USB devices and whatnot, apparently. So anyway, um, so the way it works is, uh, as, oh, you can't see that, sorry. One second. There we go. So, and now I have to find the mouse. So right now, it's, it's very basic kind of debug information. So right now I'm pressing the negative one key over and over and over. And the number you see to the right of that is the corresponding MIDI note. So it starts out at, at middle C, uh, and you can go down from there. Um, you can go up from there. Uh, but you can also get these kind of interesting combinations uh, where you're like, you know, up one, down, down two, and you can go, can you play these uh, interesting scales? So, um, yeah, uh, anyone who feel like making a fool of themselves on stage with me? Yes? No? Because this is pretty much all I got. I was hoping that someone would be wanting to come and demo with me, so. <laughs> you get to wear this sweet keyboard strap, which is... Bought that on Amazon, just for this. <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you. Well, what is your name? Uh, it's kind of complicated, but Mr. G is all... G. G. All right, G. Well, uh, so uh, Don the uh, Keytar, as everyone's calling it, uh, and your left hand is home row, and your right hand plays these, this set right here. So yeah, kind of like that, and lift it up. Like, there you go. You're an artist. So yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot more that I'd love to, to talk about with this, but um, essentially, I you know I just got started with this. Um, there's a lot of stuff I want to do. Uh, for example, right now, it's just playing regular notes. So there, it doesn't. It's not actually keeping track of like uh, what scale you want to play in. And that's one of the biggest advantages of, you know, kind of automating music is that you don't have to master such a complicated user interface. Thank you, G. Um, you know, it, you can abstract away all of the complicated aspects of playing an instrument. So my theory with this, and the reason that I want to talk to everyone about this is that I have, a, I have a hypothesis, and that is that if we make it easier to play instruments, we, if we lower the barrier of entr entry to uh, you know, becoming a musician, we'll end up with more good music rather than more bad music. So I would love everyone's help, if there's any interest at all, um, in adding some other features, uh, like being able to excuse me, play in a particular key or mode, as it were. Um, arpeggiator, for example, would be a really cool feature that's pretty easy to implement. So like I said, I'll be playing with this um, and other hardware-related things throughout the, the conference. So if you have any interest, please do come uh, and see me. Uh, and again, um, my name is Nexty Love. Uh, help Wanted, arpeggiator, GUI uh, interface for key events, and maybe we could do like some collaboration stuff. Um, anyway, there's endless possibilities. So yeah, thank you. Anyone else, please come up. I know I'm, I'm running a little bit of short on time, so that basically means that we've got like 10 minutes for people to come up here and try this, so. Anyone, anyone? Yes, you, right there, come on up. No? Oh, this is awkward. Michael, you said you were gonna play this. Come on. 
Someone's got it. I'll, I'll, get, it, I'll get it restarted for you, so, uh, so you can start at middle C. Hello, and what is your name? Martin. Martin? Nice to meet you, sir. Here is your instrument. Round of applause from the audience. Yeah, there you go. And then just basically tilt it up like this. Uh, yeah, there you go. Sorry, I know. I... Uh, so yeah, your finger is here on that hand, and then this hand is home row. Yep. And so you'll have to kind of feel around. You can take a look at the screen that will show you where you're going on the scale. So you just hit the plus two and the minus two key. Um, and then your left hand has corresponding keys as well. So you can, when you get a feel for it, you can just kind of alternate on two keys and play all the way up the scale and all the way back down. Plus one is somewhere in there, probably on this hand. Uh, try F or H. They're not labeled, so that's kind of hard. But there you are. So anyway, uh, I'm going to go sit on the couch. And uh, you guys can just finish my talk for me if you would. That would be great. Actually, I think this is the best way to give a talk, right over here. <laughs> I'm not sure if people are coming up to play the instrument or just to experience the stage. I mean, a little bit of both. both. I feel like that's the, you know, the, this event space is, is perfect for talks about art and, and music because you really, you know, you, you kind of get to like be the cowbell and really explore the space here, you know, like, yeah. So see if I can, I can instruct you on how to play this uh, remotely. So <laughs> your left hand will be on home row, uh, and then your right, you're basically holding it upside down, uh, if that helps. <laughs> yeah, so there you go. Um, and then the F keys around the F key area is... <laughs> this actually makes it more fun. Uh, you can also just leave it on, <laughs> on the table and just press the keys until you get some sounds. There you go. Yeah, so your, your, uh, your left hand is on home row, and then your right hand goes on like where print screen and pause and all those buttons are. There you go. Yeah, and so you, you get a feel for it, and there's basically those corresponding keys. There's a plus one, a minus one, a plus two, a minus two, plus three, minus three. And it goes up to plus seven, minus seven, plus 14, and minus 14. Um, then there's also a key that just doesn't alter at all, and that's A. You want to play the same note over and over? There you go. Does, so, does scroll lock do anything? Uh, I, it's hard for me to tell because all those keys are blank. Okay. Yeah. I but think, I think that, that key is just begging for a function after all these things. Well, so here's the cool thing. Uh, it, it's completely mappable. So I can show you how it works. I only finished it like later, or last night, so it's still fairly fresh in my mind. So this is uh, the entirety of what I wrote. Uh, I wrote Hitstream two years ago, so that doesn't really count. Um, and then Core MIDI requires some config. I can barely see this, oh god. Okay, so here's the config. Uh, and basically we just say, what pattern are we looking for in the USB device? And because that's a DOS keyboard, I just tell it to search for DOS keyboard, and then when it finds it, it'll connect to it. And then layout, uh, these are the key codes for the various modifiers that we want to play. So you can change that. To, to whatever you want. If you want to play it in a more traditional, you know, sitting down at your desk ma manner, with, you know, I don't know why you'd want to do that, but you could. <laughs> right, yeah, so, so here, I mean, so right over the shoulder there. There we go. And then this, this arm goes through, there you go. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, essentially, uh, the, the 
that's a vendor here in Hin.js. Uh, I built a state machine because it's not a real program unless you have a state machine. Um, and uh, so basically, like, this is how I load uh, the map. I'm not going to actually read it all out. Uh, if you're interested, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll let you in on the, on the repo. This is going to be open source as soon as it's in a kind of stable state. Um, but I think the, the, the guts of it really are right down here. Uh, this is every time you press a key. Um, we're writing to the console. We're using the core MIDI write out. And 144 is really weird, but 144 just means like, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send you a note to play, and I want you to like, uh, turn it on. And then note is the actual note you're playing. Uh, and like I said, 60 for frame of reference is the middle C in MIDI. And 127 is the velocity at which you're hitting. So this is basically like half velocity. Um, so that's pretty much like all there is to it. It's, it's really simple. Uh, I don't really want any other interesting uh, portions of, of the code. The interesting thing is having people play it. So I'm going to go back over there. And uh, we've got like another 10 minutes of uh, someone else. I think, I know Michael said that he was just dying to, to try it out. So uh, if we could get him up here, that would be fantastic. It's way cooler on this side of the stage too, which is nice. I, I feel like with the music playing, someone should be like acting out what the notes are actually. Oh, we could do it like interpretive dance. Yeah. <laughs> shall we? Yes, we shall. <laughs> oh, you get the tree. <laughs> I mean, it's here. I can't. I can't not. I get the Wi-Fi hotspot. be able to talk really bad at interpretive dance, so. Or can you be bad at interpretive dance? I don't know what I'm doing. Is that possible? <laughs> I feel like if it was possible, I would be the one to be bad at it. Lots of fun, right? Well, I don't want to pressure anyone else to, to, to play, but I'm going to have this here um, for the uh, entirety of the conference, if anyone's interested. Uh, I'm really looking for contributors. But one last thing that I have to say, I guess, is uh, um, other than thank you, uh, is essentially like this whole thing I think is kind of uh, just exploding into uh, a movement, at least in, in where I am uh, from. Michael uh, is the organizer of NodeConf in the US, and he was gracious enough to uh, allow me to organize a, a rave event at this last year's conference. And that has kind of blossomed into this big collective of people that are, that are starting to do events where you know, they're focusing on this kind of thing, or hacking with music, and DJing, and lighting, and stuff like that. So uh, if you're interested, please come and talk to me. And I would love to you know, kind of get you hooked up with some of the other people that are doing really cool stuff, uh, people that inspired me to get playing with this. So anyway, um, that's it. Thank you so much. Allow me to don my cloak.